In this video, we're going to talk about summation notation and how to make sense of it and answer problems relating to it. So let's take a look at one example first and first look at what all these different parts of this expression mean. So if we have this question, what's the sum? How do you read this, first of all? The way to read this, this is talking about this. The way to pronounce this letter is sigma. And really, this is a Greek letter, but in this context, it means addition. So this means addition of this term, x squared. You're adding x squared to itself a bunch of times. So let's break down what all these parts mean. The way to read this out loud is to say, find the sum from 3 to 5 of x squared. So that's the, the technically correct way to read that out loud, the sum from this to this of this. Here, this x squared is what we call the representative term. Every term that's added needs to basically be in this exact format. It needs to be x squared, where x, or whatever letter is the index, that's what this thing on the bottom is called, the index, basically starts at whatever number it's set on the bottom, and it goes up by exactly one every time, and you stop when you hit the top number. So let's just see what all that means for this. So this is, like I said, it's going to be x squared added a bunch of times, except instead of x, you're going to plug in a number. The first one you're going to plug in is 3. So that's going to be 3 squared. All right, there you go. But as I said, this summation means addition. So you're adding what? Another x squared. You're adding, again, this representative term. You're adding that every single time. The only difference is what you're setting as x. So in the second one, you're going to set x as not 3, but 4. Because again, it's an index. You're going up by 1 every time. So 3 squared plus 4 squared. And then in the last one, it's 5 squared. And how did I know to stop at 5? Because that's the number in the top. Whatever the number in the top is, that's where you stop with your x. So then whatever this is, 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared, is our answer. And for that, we could use a calculator, right? 9 plus 16 plus 25. You know, on our calculator, we could do that 9 plus 16 is 25, plus another 25 is 50. So our final answer here is going to be 50. Let's take a look at this other question. All right. Uh, here, one thing to notice is that whenever there is a constant multiplied to the expression, you can actually pull that constant out of the summation. So here, I could rewrite this summation as 6 times and then the sum from as n goes from 1 through 4. Notice for this problem, the index is n. It could literally be whatever letter n, i, j, x, whatever, right? So here, the index n, as it goes from 1 through 4, I want the sum of the expression n plus 1, okay? So n plus 1. So again, constants, you're allowed to pull out and multiply to this whole thing. So whatever I get for this sum, I can just multiply 6 to that. And the reason that works is because if 6 is multiplied to everything in the representative term, you could just factor it out. So anyway, so here I have the 6 factored out, and what I have left here, let's just again, the representative term here is n plus 1. So every, I'm basically adding n plus 1 to itself a bunch of times, starting with n equals 1. So the first term here is going to be 1 plus 1, which is just 2. The second term now, n itself is 2, so that's going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then when n is 3, the representative term is going to be 3 plus 1, which is 4. And then finally, when we're at n equals 4, this term is going to equal 5. So that's the, th the thing being added. So whatever that is, is my thing. So that again, now at this point, I could do it in a calculator. Is 2 plus 3, that's 5, plus another 5 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. And then finally, 14 times 6 on your calculator is 84. And so that is our answer there. Now let's look at this one. All right, this is really weird because, man, it's going from 1 through 100. This looks easy because you're like, oh, yeah, the representative term is just i. It's just the index, which means the first term is literally just going to be 1. The second term is literally just going to be 2. So it's literally just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way through 99 plus 100. Okay. so. Uh, how do you do that? I mean, do we actually want to spend a few minutes typing in all those numbers in our calculator? Um, there actually is a formula. It's funny, the mathematician Euler, back when he was in elementary school, it said that uh, his teacher was so fed up that he kept 
getting all the questions right and he was too advanced. So she gave him this impossible task for a first uh, for a first grader, which is, hey, you know, add the numbers from one through 100. Go do it. Figured that that's going to buy her like, you know, 10, 20 minutes of teaching the rest of the kids. And within one minute, he comes up and says, I have it. It's 5,050 because he had this way of doing it. He's like, yeah, you're basically adding one plus 100. That's 101. Two plus 99. That's also 101. Three plus 98. That's also 101. You're basically adding 101 to itself. How many times? Well, there's 100 numbers here, but only half of them because they're in pairs of so 50. So 101 times 50. So uh, long story short, the way to find the sum from 1 plus 2 all the way through a generic n is n plus 1, right? Because as we said, n plus 1 is what you're adding to itself. How many times? Well, not how many numbers there are, but that divided by 2. So n over 2 times n over 2, half of the number of numbers. So n over 2. So this, long story short, is the formula. That formula is one that you can always use to add up numbers from 1 through, uh, you know, a certain uh, integer. So 1 through 100 is just going to be 100 plus 1 is 101 times n, which is 100. That's what we're going up until, divided by 2. So 100 times 101 over 2, which again on your calculator is going to give you 5,050. So that's the answer. Let's take a look at this. This one is now the sum from 7 through 20 of 0.6j. So let's combine a few of the skills that we've learned. First of all, this 0.6 can be factored out. So this is really just 0 0.6 times the sum of j, so just our index, as our index goes from 7 through 20. All right, now here it might be really tempting to say, oh yeah, here we could just directly use that formula, right? And do uh, 20, which is our n, times 21 over 2. And that, that's a great start. But the problem is that gives us the sum from 1 through 20, right? The only formula that we know gives us the sum from 1 through that number. How do you get the sum from 7 through 20? Well, you basically do it in two steps. If we basically want, so we have 0.6 factored out, and we really have 1 plus, uh, we basically want, you know, 7 through 20 added up. What we could do is we could take, we know the, the, the sum from 1 through 20. We basically know that the sum from uh, j is 1 through 20. Uh, we know that that is, we know the formula for that. So from that, if we subtract the sum from 1 through 6, right? So if we basically took 1 through 20 and subtracted, so if we just had 1 through 6, if we subtracted that from 1 through 20, we'd be left with the thing we want, which is 7 through 20, right? So long story short, here what we can do is the sum from 1 through 20 is 20 times 21 over 2. And from that, if we subtract the sum from 1 through 6, which is 6 times 7 over 2, that is going to give us the sum from just 7 through 20. And all that times the 0.6 that we factored out at the beginning is going to give us our answer here. So here on our calculator, again, 20 times 21 over 2 is going to be 210 minus and 6 times 7 over 2 is going to be 21. And then 0.6 times all that. Again, you could just use a calculator. 210 minus 21 times 0.6 is 113.4 so again whatever that is the important part is the process the logic of how you set it up uh finally let's do a quick problem like this this is like where it's just the sum of five from as your index goes from one through ten these questions are really easy but they're really tricky for a lot of people because they're like wait my index isn't even in here like how do i plug in i equals one or two or ten and the answer is basically this, is that when you try to plug in uh, a value for your index or your variable that's not there, essentially if I were to ask you what is the representative term equal to when i is equal to 1, the answer is it's equal to 5. Because when you plug in i equals 1 in this expression, the expression is still 5. What about when i equals 2? Well, it's still 5. And 3, it's still 5, right? All the way through when you plug in i equals 10, it's still 5. So long story short, this is just 5 added to itself a bunch of times, specifically the number of terms uh, from 1 through 10, which there's 10 terms, 
from 1 through 10. A trick that some people fall into is if you're going from 0 through 10, there's actually 11 terms, right? Because you have to include 0 in addition to 1 through 10. So anyway, here, this is just going to be 5 times 10. So it's like whatever this thing is times the number of, uh, uh, the number of terms that you're going to have. So that's just going to be 50. And finally, there's also similarly product notation. So just like you have the summation instead of a sigma, if you have this big pi symbol, this is actually the capital pi in Greek letters. But so when you have that, the only difference is that now it's essentially going to be uh, multiplying the representative term all those times instead of adding it. So this is going to be, here the representative term is i plus 2, right? So when i is equal to 1, that's going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. And instead of plus, we're going to do multiplied by. And now, same thing, when your index is now 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. And then when your index is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. And finally, when your index is 4, 4 plus 2, that's 6. So that is times 6. So basically, 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, whatever that product is on your calculator would be your answer. We don't need to do it out, but, but that is how you deal with summation and product notation.